the space dogs of the Cosmodrome. The space dogs of the Cosmodrome. Hi, everybody. My name is Amanda Villalobos, and I'm the puppet and prop designer for the show Space Dogs. And I've snuck backstage to give you guys a sneak peek of some of the puppets and props that bring the show to life. So introducing Laika, who is the star of the show, and we have a couple of versions of her that we made. Um, we started with a plush version of Laika, and she has a movable jointed neck. And as we were working on the production, we realized we also wanted Laika to be able to do a couple of different things. And so we made a second version of Laika, and she has a wire armature inside of her. And this allows her to be connected to the guitar so she can be part of the musical numbers. Um, she can also be posed and sat in different places um, and used by one actor as opposed to two to manipulate her and give her some of the lifelike qualities that we want her to have so that the audience can feel connected to her and that she feels really alive. When Ellie Heyman, the director, approached me about working on this show, we discussed a lot about what the visual vocabulary we were going to use. And she really introduced me to Carol Zeman, who is an incredible Czechoslovakian film director, maker, um, and he was like the daddy of special effects <laughs> from the 40s, you know, through the 70s. And um, we were really excited about a lot of the techniques he used and we talked a lot about how we wanted to use these analog special effects and puppetry to really convey this dog world. And it's how we really focused in on having these two different sizes of Leica. So we had this version, which is like the large OG, as we called her, Leica, where the actors and the humans were interacting with like a dog. And then more of the internal feelings when we really are in the dog's world, we have this smaller version of Laika. And in those scenes, the dogs are talking to each other and we're seeing them through the live camera feed and then they're being projected for the audience to see. And that allows us to create these two different worlds um, and, and bring to life the voice of the dogs. So the design process was really exciting for me. Um, I started by doing a lot of research. There's so much material out there about Laika and all of these dogs that they sent to space. Um, and so I really just went through all the photographs and all the history of what was going on in that time period and then started to really look at materials that reflected that era, especially in the 50s. Um, I was looking at a lot of like acrylics and reflective materials and thinking about how to create a lot of the special objects in which the dogs were encapsulated in as they were like sent up to space. Um, and I wanted them to have a reference to the 50s and the 60s but to also reference what we're doing in this show, which is it's a rock concert, um, it's a musical, and it's Nick and Van um, bringing this story to life in the way that they are telling it. And so we use mirrored disco balls and uh, this mirrored paint and different like acrylic techniques and lighting to try to bring this fantastical feeling to the world of taking something to space while also memorializing Laika and understanding the depth and sadness of what was actually happening and what we were actually doing. The rehearsal process was so exciting because it was finally a moment to bring in all of these ideas that I had from reading the script about how we could visually tell the story that Nick and Van had created. And once we were in the room, we were really able to focus and really it became very clear which moments we really needed to visually tell and which moments we did not need to. And so it was a great editing process. Um, but it was also like a moment to figure out what a puppet can do. So normally in a process, I'll figure out you know, what does a puppet need to do and build it from there. But then what happens in the room magically is you also discover what an object can just do on its own naturally. And it's all about finding the gesture that allows you to connect to an object that's inanimate 
and feel emotion and feel what it is realistically doing for an audience. Um, and so that's always the really exciting part is like discovering what that puppet is going to do and how we're going to make it do it. And it's great. One of the really exciting things about working with Nick and Van um, was about how open and excited they were to learn the puppetry and that they really understood the importance of bringing Laika to life on stage with them. Um, and this is part of the process that I really love working with actors and seeing them take all of the emotion and all of the work that they normally do with their own face and body physically and teaching them how to take that energy and push it directly into an inanimate object that's in front of them and allow that object to convey their emotion and their meaning and to trust that it will translate to an audience. Um, and the moment that that clicks for an actor is really exciting for me to see them understand that when they're giving breath to this dog, they're allowing the dog to pant, they're finding the gestures that bring this dog to being like a real dog. What is important to me when designing puppets for a show is really, why are we, is answering the question, why are we using puppetry in the storytelling and how is it helping to tell that story? Um, it's really important to me that it's not a gimmick, it's not being used in a way that is manipulative, but moreover that it's an honest, representation of an emotion that we're trying to convey to an audience. Um, and I think both Ellie Heyman, Nick and Van were all so truly excited about using puppetry because of the storytelling. And that really excited me as well because it gave us so much room to explore and discover what these puppets were gonna do in telling the story.